Joined now by my panel, Leon Caldwell, Washington Post Live Editor, Daily 202 co-author, former Democratic Senator from North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp, former Republican National Committee Chair, Michael Steele, and political punter, pu uh, reporter and Sunday Square Off host of NBC's Phoenix affiliate, Bram Resnick. Bram, but I'm glad you were vacationing here in, in, in Washington today. So I thought we're, this is a big year for yeah, time for vacation. You knew that, yeah. In, uh, December, Bram, you're, you have been the center of the of the domestic political universe, 2018, 2020, and now uh, 2022, and now here we go again, 2024. Um, is this a smart move or not, by Kirsten Cinema? This was an inevitable move. She's been going in this direction for at least the last decade, really, I believe, since she won her seat in Congress in 2012. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's been the chatter in Phoenix that she would do this at some point. Uh, we thought back in 2018, after she won the Senate, she, she, she would immediately declare right. that she was an independent. She didn't. But here we are today. And so when I saw the news, I thought, OK, yeah. Yeah, it, it's finally happening. And someone, I think it was at Sahil, described this as a, as a divorce. They've Is it a full-fledged divorce? They've been living in separate separate homes yeah. for a long, <laughs> yeah. long time. Okay, yeah. separate beds, whatever you want to yeah. call it. Uh, she has no relationship with the party. The party today, their statement was basically, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Right. That was the Arizona Democratic right. Party. So is today a great day for the Arizona Republican Party for 2024? Not yet. They have a lot of problems of their own. We are still not clear of the 2022 election. There still may be court cases, a contest of the gubernatorial race. That party is still in the thrall of Donald Trump mm -hmm. and will likely remain that way. Look at our legislature. It is very Trumpian. So they're not past that yet. The Republican Party will name their new chair in the state. Uh, come January, that's a big vote that will tell us mm -hmm. a lot about where this party is going. Heidi, I can't, you actually didn't serve with her. You guys crossed paths, right? You were, you that's were, right. Uh, you lost in eighteen. She won in eighteen, um, but you certainly are friendly with a lot of the Senate. You know, what is her reputation internally? Actually, it's pretty good, mm -hmm. Chuck, that she can get a deal done. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk to people who have watched the deals that were made over the last two years. She's been in the center of all of them. And anyone who thought that she was a rubber stamp for the caucus is wrong. But what's interesting is the statements coming out of Democratic senators, out mm -hmm. of Chuck Schumer, have really been embracing her. Because when she left, she did not take away her vote from the committee right. structure. And so she, the, these committees will be majority Democratic And she waited until after the runoff, right. by the way. Right. I mean, she did have some deference to the yeah. party. I, I, I think this doesn't change anything that happens in Washington. Where this matters is in Arizona. She's less popular than either Biden or Trump in Arizona in every category. What she's got to figure out is, are there enough moderate Democrats and McCain Republicans to form a coalition that will return her to the United States Senate? And I think, I think if I'm her and you're looking at the numbers and you're looking at a very nasty uh, primary race, which I think she would have, I think she stepped out of that and dared the Democrats yeah. to put someone up against her to and, keep that seat. And not just put someone up against her. Now the Democratic Party, Chuck Schumer, has a choice to make. Yeah. Is the DSCC going to support her or are they going to support the Democratic nominee? By the way, the in the same race? cycle that they have Angus King mm -hmm. running for re-election, who does not run as a Democrat, right. who they help make sure the field gets cleared for all the time mm -hmm. in May, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's no clarity on that yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kirsten Cinema, a lot of when people make this decision, they have to think about the fundraising. Are they going to be a viable candidate at not part of a political yeah. party apparatus? Kirsten Cinema is a phenomenal fundraiser. She likes to fundraise. Everyone knows that she likes to talk to donors. Um, but the question is, is, is that she still going to have that national party to help her yeah. in the long run if she needs it? And We'll right see what Chuck right now, right. fundraising is about small dollar donors. Yeah. And she just now has abandoned small do dollar donors across. And so she's got to find enough money within the financial right. institutions <laughs> to fund it. My, my, Michael Steele, you're, yeah. you're a guy who's, who's in a part of the Republican Party that the base doesn't like all the time. You're right. And I, I could envision, <laughs> so you know, <laughs> you ran for the Senate. Had you been in the Senate? In this Republican Party, I could picture you feeling as if you may have had felt no choice but to abandon your party, stick as an independent. Like, if you're in the center of your party, this, 
I get this is a tempting I, you know, I get I get where she where she where she's coming from and, and how she got to where she is over the last 10 years to your point she couldn't figure out how to become a, a McCain Republican or a McCain right. Democrat or a right. McCain yeah. Democrat yeah. but also a McCain Republican yeah. meaning to make that move wholesale into the Republican Party as she looked and saw the MAGA wings begin to unfurl that where does she go mm -hmm. where does she fit into that so now I to both your points her strategy has got to be, how do I make this work, this independent posture work? She's got some examples. Mm -hmm. King, she's got uh, what we just saw. Evan with, McMullen. Evan yeah. McMullen. We yeah. saw what well, we saw in Alaska, mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly. Even, even you know. Murkowski's without, basically barely. She didn't win with Republicans. Right. She didn't win <laughs> yeah. with Republicans. Yeah. And, and, she had the support of the party behind her. But she was she the, had her, final four but her, No, but that's this election. <laughs> the one before, yeah. was she was on her own. So All right. There, there's, there are but, legs there. But, Bram. I want to get back to who is Kirsten Sinema, right. because this little quote's been circulating from the Hartford Current, uh, circa 2000, I believe this is uh, in 2003, uh, but <laughs> after Joe Lieberman, <laughs> Joe Lieberman lost a primary and then left his party, mm -hmm. and she was protesting it. This is from the Hartford Current. He's ashamed of Democrats, said Kirsten Sinema, a social worker and organizer of the event. I don't even know why he's running. He seems to want to get Republicans voting for him. What kind of strategy <laughs> is that? Now, that was Kirsten Sinema, a much younger version who is pretty much a more progressive activist. But you've watched this evolution in her over 20 years, arguably. Yeah, that was a much, much younger version of Kirsten Sinema. And all the things you're talking about, that polling, things that may or may not happen, I told you this, I think, five years ago. Mm -hmm. She's the shrewdest politician I've ever seen, certainly in Arizona. You're not and, underestimating her, And maybe even, no, she, maybe even nationwide. She knows what the polling is. She's got the path, path mapped out. She can't be sure it's going to be the right path, but she's got it mapped out. This isn't like, oh, let's do this mm -hmm. today. Right. This didn't just happen. As I said, it's an evolution. She's been moving in this direction. She knows what the numbers are. And now, to the larger point of you have Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden in mm. some really tough positions right now, kind of in, in a stare down with her and Ruben Gallego and whoever else might jump in. Heidi, from my perspective, it certainly looks as if the Democratic Party apparatus had more patience for Joe Manchin whenever he had an issue, than they did with Kirsten Sinema. And it feels as if she took note of that. That whatever you want to think of this, and I know some said, well, he's West Virginia, that's hard. You know, um, that she wasn't given the same deference. That it okay. was sort of, there was, a, there was a snarkier, snider version of it. I don't, think, I don't think that's fair. Number one, Joe kept going to caucus meetings. He kept taking the hits from the colleagues. He kept engaging. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm done. I'm not going to go to the caucus meeting. I'm not going to really engage. It's and the she lack wasn't. of engagement. Right, right. Okay. And, and I think Joe was always willing to go into Chuck's office and have the debate with him, fight the, the, the fights. And at the end of the, the day, Joe delivered the deal that was the Inflation Reduction Act that a lot of people ran on. And so she's always taken more of a backseat. She's, a, she's, a, she's an inside player, incredibly shrewd mm -hmm. legislator. Later. And a lot of people who I trust, who are not partisans, who have watched this Senate, will tell you most of those deals would not have gotten done without her shrewd ability. And so I think people appreciate that, but mm -hmm. she's never been an insider. And Joe has been part of the caucus a lot longer. Leanne, I had somebody send me Hogan Cinema. <laughs> as, the, uh, oh, as the 2024 th uh, third way ticket. So was tipping the yeah, eggnog of that early. <laughs> Too much eggnog this early. Come on. Now. I guess that's how she gets past the Arizona already. <laughs> right, and she was up for red for right, election, exactly. right? Yeah. No labels has their own problems right yeah, now. Yeah, no yeah. labels does, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, that's fascinating. I think that, I mean, there's a couple of things here that, that, you know, everyone I've talked to. So I was in Arizona in January when the party censored her. I talked to a lot of Democrats there. It was You know this, but it was hard to find Democrats who weren't really mad oh my at goodness. her. goodness. It's amazing how, how angry they still are. Yeah. yeah, so I called a bunch of people today, people in the state legislature, some mm -hmm. uh, Democratic pollsters, um, people I talked to back then, and they say that everyone agrees that there was just no path for her in the primary. And, you know, she's saying that this is being a natural evolution. Yeah, she's the most electable Democrat that they could nominate. Right. Okay. Exactly. In the general. But yeah. she just can't get past a primary. Um, and so, you know, maybe this is a natural evolution for her, but this is also very political. As you mentioned, she's yeah. very shrewd. She knows exactly what she's doing. And it comes down to her poll numbers. What does Joe Biden do here? And, 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 you know, Michael, what, I mean, I sit here... 
He embraces it. That's I, the best. He embraces what, it. What's it? Wholehearted. It her or her, it the everything she represents because the last thing Joe Biden can afford and Chuck Schumer can afford yeah. is to have her get ticked to the point. You, you talk about her not engaging with the caucus to the point where it's in her interest to sort of to right. saddle a little bit more to the right. So, her Bram, people. if he endorses her for re- re-election and, and basically tells the Democrats to stand down, what does that do for Biden's ability to carry the state? That's And, and that's the big question, right? And this kind of stare down that's going on, you are just going to depress the Democratic vote, right? You really think you could? Yes. I mean, yeah. What, oh, yeah. yeah I think what what, 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 you, what you, happens when Carrie Lake announces her Senate candidacy? <laughs> Please, let's hold off on <laughs> Carrie Lake 2024. Right. We're not done with 2022 yet. Well, we are, except she's not. <laughs> she's but, not. I understand that. But that's my point here. You know, you're, 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 we don't, you know, politics cinema isn't in a vacuum. Really good well, cinema suddenly look Lake good if, if, if it's Carrie Lake staring at the other side. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to go there yet. You know, it's there's, but we there's do. Still so, oh, yeah. <laughs> but the be, be my guest. But the know? Republican <laughs> opponent matters, right? It will right. matter. Right. Right. That's the point. It will matter it's going to matter. What would John McCain think of this, Brent? Uh, he admire her. You know what? Um, right? Mm-hmm. John McCain's uh, language. Uh, he'd admire the heck out of her, but he was a pretty shrewd operator himself, and he'd really wonder how she got into this position. And this is interesting. You mentioned how she gets along well with her colleagues. She's always gotten along well with colleagues, especially colleagues on the opposite side, right? Oh, yeah. Andy Biggs, good friend of mine, which shocks Andy Democrats, Biggs, yeah. but she found a way in the state legislature to work with him. I think, he's and met, yet, Ro- I think she's met Romney's best friend in the Democrats. They, right? Right? They, yeah. yeah, they have some ties there. Yeah. That, that are pretty significant. But she's also managed to alienate yeah. the grassroots, as, as we've heard. And, and frankly, a lot of friends of hers, I, as I, John McCain would not have done. I that. have sensed this. Heidi, let's say she succeeds with this strategy. How many other senators that are what I would call soft partisans would be envious of that and say, boy, now I'd like to try that? Uh, it's pretty lonely when you go out all alone mm-hmm. on on this kind of movement and you know the the you know whether whether you want to agree or not you read the twitter feed and it's brutal today uh, don't read on, the twitter on, feed. yeah no I, I know but but you know insiders here do sure, and all of a sudden and do. and and part of part of this is i think trying to find a path forward i would not assume that she'll run I mean, everybody is like, oh, this yeah. is, this, she's, she's going to run. Yeah, and I think, I think that right now she says, this is the only path forward. Yeah. I'm going to take this step, take the, take yeah. what's going to happen, and then I'll see the if I can The ultimate Garbo move. Yeah. yeah but <laughs> she, the she, ultimate Garbo <laughs> move. Someone did it. say that this was a trial balloon <laughs> yeah. on a potential Fair re-election. Yeah. Yeah. She'll, want some, word, she'll want something bigger and better. Yeah. And regarding right. Twitter, pay attention. She to, always run She had a tweet last week where she criticized all the people who pose on Twitter. Yeah. And she said, look at me, I get things done. It was a Twitter thread of 10 or 11 oh. tweets. And, I, and it was, yeah. you know, get stuff done. If you're, doing That's Twitter th- motto. if you're still doing Twitter threads, you've got the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Michael and Bram, uh, happy vacation. Thank you Thank for working you. on it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.